Hello and welcome to the next installment on Jack's Mac YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going through setting up HomeBridge. I have a smart home, which means I have a bunch of accessories that are controllable by just saying, hey Siri, and asking it to do something. So my lights, some of my other devices like my TV, speakers, they all come on with just a voice command. So you're probably already aware of this technology. What the biggest challenge is, is getting them all to work under one system. There's three major systems that are out right now, which is Apple's HomeKit, which is what I'm favoring just because I'm an Apple fanboy. Doesn't necessarily mean it's better than the others, but that's just the one I'm leaning toward. The other two are, of course, Google Home and Amazon Alexa. They don't all work together seamlessly, but there is a program that's basically a hack that allows HomeKit to recognize accessories that were not made for HomeKit as HomeKit accessories. Now, the first thing that you may be asking is, is this secure? Well, anytime you're hacking anything, you're running some kind of a risk. That being said, what HomeBridge does is takes the communication between the software and the hardware from the original manufacturer that is not HomeKit compatible and getting it to talk to HomeKit. So your entire system that's set up with HomeBridge is as secure as your HomeKit system would have been or as secure as your third-party software that's controlling the third-party accessory would have been. Now, if your network's not secure, if you're setting up passwords that are really easy to guess for your third-party systems, then you're running the risk anyway, and it's not a HomeBridge issue. So that being said, HomeBridge in and of itself is secure, but it is dependent on third-party manufacturers, third-party software, because that's what's controlling these non-HomeKit accessories. It's also depending on how secure your network is. So that being said, I'm fine with it. I'm secure with it. A lot of other people are. And we'll go through how to make sure when we set up HomeKit, how to make sure that stays secure. So what I did was I wiped out HomeBridge from my system completely. Right now, I don't control any of the third-party accessories using HomeKit because they're, they're gone. What I wanted to do with you today is I wanted to reset it up and take you step by step on how to do this because it's kind of mysterious for a lot of people and there are some challenges and roadblocks that you run into. That's what we're going to go into. I'm not going to edit this much because I want you to see the roadblocks and hiccups I encounter along the way because this is not straightforward. One of my frustrations with some of these how-to videos that I find online, not to take a jab at anybody, but they kind of set it up in a perfect world. You do this, 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 and this, and now it's working. That's not really how it works. So this is going to be a very realistic uh, explanation of how to set up HomeBridge in your home. So without further ado, that was a really long intro. I hope you're still sticking around. Let's go ahead and set up HomeBridge on, at my place, and I'll take you through it step by step. Here we go. Okay, so this is going to be the front to back complete installation of HomeBridge. So buckle up, this is going to take a while, but I will edit the video so it's not too bad for you guys. So when you first load it up, I'm, I'm going to show you how I got here. It's just a Google search for HomeBridge. I used GitHub. And that took me to the HomeBridge wiki. Go ahead and click on that. That takes me to the setup instructions. Here's all the different platforms you could install it on. We're installing it on Mac OS. So now here are the prerequisites. A computer running a recent version of Mac OS. Mine's recent enough. Access the terminal. Sure. It's used on machines that do not yet have HomeBridge installed. I completely wiped it clean. It should not. Install Node.js. So we have to install Node.js from this website 
and run the installer with all the default options selected. So let's go ahead and open this in a new tab. And there's a Mac OS installer. Let's just go for the PKG, keep our life simple. Allow. Open that up. Continue, continue, agree. And it has installed version 12.18.4 and NPM 6.14.0. Close. I'll keep it. Okay. So now we need to test that it's working. So to test that it's working, you copy and paste node v into the terminal. The quickest way to open up the terminal, hold down the command key, hit spacebar, it's going to open up a spotlight search, and you just type terminal. Pop that open, and here we go. So, node-v, that gives you the version number of node. And we've got version 12.18.4. Good. Same for npm-v. And we've got the version of NPM. Great. So far, so good. Step two, install Homebridge. And the way we're going to do that is we're just going to copy this whole string and paste that into Terminal. Whenever you enter a command in Terminal that starts with SUDO, that stands for super user do, and you're always going to be asked for a password. So, here we go. It is installing. Now, I'm going to edit that out. It's going to take a while. It takes maybe about a minute, maybe two minutes to install. So, don't freak out if it's taking longer in this video. It's probably going to look like it took a really short amount of time. It didn't. It takes a while. Next step. Set up Homebridge as a service that will start on boot. You can use the provided NB service command. Okay. We do want it to start on boot. Because obviously if the Homebridge server is not running, all your non-HomeKit compliant applications or appliances will not work. Okay. This is running relatively smoothly. Now, in the terminal window, notice that URL, the first of the three lines with the asterisk. Notice the URL, localhost colon 8581. You're going to need to remember those last four numbers. That's your port, 8581. That's what's going to get you to your web utility. Okay, and now we're going to install the Homebridge Config UI. Now, what that is, it's a web-based interface to control Homebridge. It's way easier than trying to use the terminal. So let's go ahead and click on open that in a new tab. Here we go. There's the command to install the config UI. Okay, that's done. It says you can now access this via localhost 8080. I'm just going to click on that, open it up in a new tab. It doesn't work. You have to go to localhost 8581 or localhost colon followed by the four numbers I asked you to remember earlier. There's Homebridge. Now we finally got that. Okay, now to make sure your home bridge server is running, go back to terminal and type home bridge. This didn't let me run it. 
it's going to require that I type sudo space home bridge. Enter the password. And then we'll go. Now, we're going to fix that later. That's a permissions issue. That shouldn't be that way. So there's one hiccup. So let's find out where Homebridge is installed. Let's log into Homebridge and see if we can figure it out from there. Here's our storage path. It's in the dot Homebridge folder. So if we copy that, that should also be where the Homebridge command lives. Let's go there. Go, go to folder, and enter. And the folder can't be found. So let's try something else. Let's go to terminal, and we're gonna force it. I hit command N for the new terminal window. And I'm going to type open, and I'm gonna type in that folder path that it mentioned in the web interface there and it opens it that way so that's how you'll have to open it now for whatever reason there's nothing in here Okay, I did a spotlight search for Homebridge and I found the Homebridge folder here. I'm gonna open it up and it looks like this is what we need. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna do a brute force permissions change on everything. And we're gonna take that Homebridge server, Homebridge folder, go back into it, we're gonna go up one directory into node modules and then we're going to go to this home bridge get info it already gives me read and write but i'm going to say i want to unlock this and i'm going to say apply to all enclosed items if i type home bridge So it looks like I can't make a directory in the Homebridge folder. So I'm going to go back to that folder, go, go to folder, I'm going to open that up. I can't. I've got to do it through terminal, terminal, open, and there we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get info on the Homebridge and it doesn't say that I can read and write in there. Apparently, I need to. So I'm going to change permissions on that. Add me select. And I'm going to be able to read and write. I'm going to say apply to enclosed items. And that should let me do whatever I want to in that folder. So I want to type Homebridge again. There we go.
Now it's loading. Cool. That fixes that. There's your Homebridge server. It is up and running. It's ready to go. Now you just have to install your plugins. And the way you would do that is if you need new plugins, like for instance, if you were going to install the plugin for the ring, you just type in ring. And these are the plugins that are available. And it's simply a matter of just installing. I already have it installed, but it's just better to click install and it runs you through and everything is done for you. That's how you set up a Homebridge server. Now, going back as far as security goes, let's go back to Homebridge settings because the login for this is admin admin. That's by default. So you're gonna want to edit this and the username is status admin, the full name, put whatever you want. Then put in a new secure password that's not admin. save and anytime you have the option to set up 2FA, set up 2FA. So I can't do this right now because I use my phone to record, believe it or not. So just add that to your Google Authenticator and that'll give you 2FA. But for sure, go back and change the password. The number that it kicks out for you also, if you go back to status, there's a number here. That number is also really critical. You want to keep that number private. I'm going to block that out in, in, in post editing. So uh, I'm not I'm not going to leave that there. But um, you want to keep that number kind of a secret as well. And that'll keep you secure. That'll keep your home kit secure. That'll keep your home bridge secure. So it's been a wild ride. We got it up and running. I hope you're still here i'm going to try to edit this and make this as uh palatable as possible uh this is a rough one for me and so hopefully it helps you guys if it does go ahead and hit like and uh, go ahead and subscribe and uh, we'll see what i got next week see you guys bye